welcome to Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. I would like to encourage everyone on my Facebook friends list, everyone in my social groups, and all of my listeners worldwide. Please do me a favor. Hit that like button and share this video podcast with your friends, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. It's free. Help make this video podcast go viral by posting this link on your Facebook page, your Instagram page, and or on your Twitter page. This video podcast is available in three forms, audio, video, and as a written text in order for us to reach our audience. November 10th, 2023 will mark our 32 year anniversary. We have upgraded our platform by moving from an audio podcast to a video podcast using StreamYard technology. We want to interact with our audience in real time through the chat room, during our live podcast. I want to know if there is anyone on my Facebook friends list or in my social groups that live within the United States of America who knows how to do a professional fundraising. If so, please send me a message to my Facebook inbox. Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast is our interactive black grassroots media component. We discuss controversial topics that you wouldn't hear about from the mainstream media. We're committed to reporting truthful and accurate news. We believe that now is the time for a comprehensive new strategy and a new movement for black people slash African people. I use this platform to interact with everyone on my friends list and everyone in my social groups by giving black business owners free airtime to promote their products and services. I give people in the faith community an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I give black authors and ordinary law abiding citizens an opportunity to share their special talents to my listeners from around the globe. After the show, I offer guest speakers an incentive by teaching them how to create their own podcast and YouTube channel to help them earn extra revenue. I also assist people on my friends list with creating basic websites, finding college scholarships, grants, housing, and legal services all for free. I created a GoFundMe page last April 2022 as a crowdfunding source so that everyone on my Facebook friends list and everyone in my social groups would know exactly where the funds would be going. This will also indicate our progress in getting this film project fully funded and made. Out of 1,800 people, my Facebook friends list, only five people have donated to our film project on our GoFundMe page. Black people, African people, we got to do better. This is for the sake of our children. My film project is my last attempt to try to do something positive for my racial group here in America before I cut and run to Africa. At this time, all I can do is news commentary. We host our virtual conferences every last Saturday of the month until we are able to raise the capital to fund our film project Hood Liberator Made in Chicago, The War Against Willie Lynch Begins is a solution-based docudrama which is based on my experience growing up in the inner cities of Chicago and the purpose why I created Gurkham. This is our Black Panther moment, except it's not owned by Disney, it's owned by us. We want to get this film in front of 500 million people worldwide. We will offer a 21st century solution both domestically within the United States of America and throughout the diaspora. Cam is my gift to black millennials, Generation Z, and my group members worldwide. 
It's my hope that we can eventually create our own black film industry, black hair product, product industry, and sporting industry. All I have at this time is my revised book, my virtual store, my online groups, and this platform. I recommend that if you're serious about working with me and turning my vision and plan for black America into a reality, then purchase my revised book and read my story for yourself. If you agree with what I'm trying to do in the African-American community, then make arrangements with me to come on this podcast so that we can talk about it. I'm using this technology to broadcast my vision and plan to all who will listen. This is my hope that the African immigrant community in America would come forth and work with me first in getting this film project fully funded and made so that we can build Grakai of Chicago together and making our presence known within the African American community starting in Chicago, then expand to 10 African nations. This is for credibility within the African American community throughout the diaspora and sending a, a strong message to the black world. I don't operate like the next black man. I have my own style and way of doing things. I reach out to black America online and in real life for the past 31 years. Now my focus is on reaching out to African immigrants within the United States of America from the following African nations, South Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Uganda, Angolia, Liberia, Ivory Coast, Ghana, and Nigeria. Stand up and work with me. The sooner we get this film project fully funded and made, the sooner we can build Gorkai of Chicago and expand to Africa, starting in South Africa. Once the proceeds from the docudrama starts pouring in, then I will be in a better position financially to purchase property in Chicago, buy office equipment, and hire qualified black middle class professionals and African immigrants within the United States of America. I will run my Christian business the way I run my home drama free. The Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago mission is to eradicate urban violence in Chicago through art, culture, commerce, spiritual development, and hosting African tours in 10 African nations. We're going to meet people from my African group, Group Kai of Africa. I will bring the best of the diaspora with me to, to each African nation so that we can set up local chapters and do international trade among our people. We will reconnect black entrepreneurs with African entrepreneurs, black artists with African artists. In this Christian business, our objective is to heal from enslavement and colonization. Since Black America slash Black Chicago has overlooked and rejected my vision and plan for the past 31 years, my Christian business will be membership based. I am only responsible for my members. Those who are not part of us, we will pray for them, show them tough love, and keep it moving. Once we have uh, a physical building in place, we will hold mandatory orientation for new members and local residents. Everyone must pass our criminal background checks, sign the community pledge, and submit their thumbprints to be placed in our database. We will separate ourselves from con artists, degenerates, off-code Negroes, pedophiles, and urban terrorists. Upcoming events. Please mark, please mark your calendar for our next Kirkham Virtual Conference, Saturday, October 28, 2023. Theme. Grakam core objective, uniting the African American community and the African immigrant community within the United States of America. Where? Facebook Live slash StreamYard. Time, 2 p.m. through 3 p.m. American Central Time, 3 p.m. Canadian Time, 8 p.m. West African Time, 9 p.m. South African Time, 10 p.m. East African time and 8 p.m. UK time. Instructions on how to participate on the show. First, watch my video podcast. This is called Side A. After I finish my presentation, then I will open up the phone lines through Facebook Messenger. 
This is called Side B. You can interact with, with me in real time, either by voice call, by clicking on the phone icon, or by video call, by clicking on the camera icon. Today's topic of discussion is as follows. The Israel-Hamas conflict, and what is the solution for Africa? The kind of Africa. Our first topic, the Israel-Hamas conflict. The grassroots community activist movement gives our condolences to both the Jewish people and the Palestinian people. We all need to pay close attention to this war because it could become a larger war and we could end up in World War III, as I mentioned in my revised book. This attack by Hamas has taken everyone by surprise. It was a massive intel failure with Hamas attacking Israel in over 20 different locations. We have had to witness a shocking, devastating video coming out of the Middle East after Hamas militants issued a surprise attack on Israel. Nearly 2,000 people have been killed on both sides. Israelis as well as Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. 22 Americans have also died in Israel. Israel has banned electricity, water, and other items coming into the Gaza Strip. Other countries are enforcing a blockade as well as they are attacking many of the Hamas strongholds there in the Gaza Strip. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and National Unity Party leader Manny Grant says the government will not pass any laws or make any decisions that do not concern the conduct of the war. We've seen various students from university issuing statements, some of them criticizing members of Congress for making statements that they stand with Israel. Then you have people who stand with the Palestinian, Black Lives Matter Chicago, for what they've been posting. And so we've seen a significant number People speaking on both sides of this issue has led to a lot of condemnation as we're seeing bodies on live TV being pulled out of the rubbles from the bombing campaign by Israel. There are countries in the regions that are trying to help, including Arab nations. Israel has the United States unwavering support. A lot of people don't understand this region, the difference between Hamas and the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization. Purpose is to liberate Palestine, achieve Palestinian self-determination, and securing the return of the refugees. It was conceived at the Arab League Summit in Cairo and back the use of armed struggle to achieve its goal. In contrast, Hamas is a Sunni Islamist political and militant organization currently governing the Gaza Strip of the Palestinian territories. It is labeled as a terrorist organization. When people say that they stand with Palestine, it doesn't mean that they are pro-Hamas. There's disinformation about his Hezbollah and Lebanon being involved with this attack. There is no ev- evidence as of yet. I watched a documentary entitled, quote, How Britain Started the Arab-Israeli Conflict, unquote. From what I understand, in 1948, the state of Israel was founded. The white supremacist financial elite had their hand 
behind this ongoing conflict by promising to give Palestine to the Jews after World War II. Many wars have broken out since, since then between the state of Israel and the Arabs. In 2006, Hamas came into power in Gaza. Hamas is also in the West Bank. When Israel became a state, a lot of Palestinians were forced to migrate to different areas. Hamas started up during the time the Egyptian Brotherhood was growing in the 1980s. The Palestinians people were suffering, so Hamas decided to get him get into politics and run for public office. The average Palestinian is just trying to live their life. That is the distinction between them and Hamas. The Palestinian people want to live their lives. They don't deserve what's happening to them. So many innocent people on both sides are being deleted and atrocities are on the rise because what's happening now is not sustainable. When you turn Gaza into rubble, you have innocent people living there. You can't resolve a conflict as long as bombs are being dropped on all sides. Where do we go from here? Hamas is a terrorist organization. Those Palestinians there may have voted for them, but that doesn't make them Hamas. They want to enact Sharia law to govern two million people in the Gaza Strip. Palestinians have been living under pretty extreme circumstances since 2006. The PLO under Arafat, Hamas has been very clear they want part of Jerusalem and they want the Palestinian state to be recognized. Hamas is interested in destabilizing the region. There are a lot of stories out there about Iran having direct involvement in this attack. These are the same people who are yelling Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Why the United States historically stood steadfast with Israel. America sends Israel billions of dollars annually. This relationship goes all the way back to 1948. America was the first country to recognize Israel as a state. They are our allies. They believe in democratic values. They share intelligence with America about other countries in the Middle East. You had European Jews who were being deleted in Germany. And so it was the creation of Israel having their own country and homeland. And then you have Palestinians who was already living there for thousands of years. All of a sudden you got the back and forth. This is my land that literally has been the problem. According to the Bible, the land belongs to Israel. America has been trying to pressure this two-state solution, starting with President Jimmy Carter. Ever since then, every American president has been trying to negotiate the land issue. Middle East and hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were displaced from their homeland, and Jerusalem is the crown jewel for both Israel and the Palestinian is the crown jewel for Christians, Jews, and Muslims. I remember, I remember when I used to do street ministry, I ran across a few black Hebrew Israelites. Certain fac factions of Hebrew Israelites, they would say the, that the Africans knew we were Hebrews and sold us into American slavery. And Israel is our promised land, all pseudo. If you believe that the promised land is Israel, then why are y'all still in America standing on the street corners instead of going over to Israel and fighting for your promised land? 
The problem I have with some of the Hebrew Israelites, many of them are militant over here in America, while Hamas has attacked Israel, but you guys are still here in America arguing, arguing on the street corners. When I started telling them about Jesus slash Yahshua, they start laughing at me. All I'm saying is Hamas has attacked Israel. I see the Muslims putting in work. I'm talking to the Hebrew Israelites. Why won't you guys go over there to defend your promised land? Instead, you all are over here in Chicago on the street corners talking about how the Africans sold us into slavery. What are you guys going to, going to do to get your promised land back? I believe there's two groups of black Hebrew Israelites. The, there's the serious ones that goes to Israel and support the IDF, which means Israel Defense Forces. Ethiopian Jews, they're in Israel, and they are part of IDF. There's a lot of black Americans who believe that they are descendants of Hebrew Israelites. Black Americans are dying over pseudo information. I tell people at the end of the day, the Bible is faith-based. Either you believe it or not. Please leave a public comment on my YouTube page about the topic. Most of all, share this video podcast with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. Our second topic. What is the solution for Africa, Grakai of Africa? I heard Africa joined the G20. The G20 is an intragovernmental forum comprising of 20 sovereign countries, the European Union and the African Union. My question to African leaders, what does the G20 has that Africa do on its own? What is it that BRICS, which is which stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, uh, it was formed to compete against the American dollar. So what is BRICS doing that Africa can't do on its own? The problem with the G20 and BRICS is that it will take away the best African nations in order to, in order to give them impression that they belong to an important organization. By the time African starts to real, really come to terms with what's going on in the world and decides to unify with the 54 nations on the continent, they will only have access to the poor nations compared to BRICS, the United States of America, Europe, and China. But if only Africa would embrace Gurkai of Africa, we could create our own African credit union, our own version of the stock market, create our own passport, create our own African military, which could help resolve wars on the African continent, create our own African healthcare system, which could deal with pan pandemics, create our own African academic curriculum, create our own entertainment center which would consist of African empowerment films, stage, play, stage plays, and sports. Africa is fed up with colonial puppets who are doing the bidding for the white supremacist financial elites, which is to protect their interests, that is Africans' natural resources. When Africa don't have an interest in your economy and your natural resources, then Western nations will continue to exploit your resources and view you as less than human. I am so proud of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger for standing up against France and kicking them out of their country. There, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. For example, the oil pipelines in Nigeria are running through small villages where poverty is high, yet the oil is headed to benefit European nations. You would think that after 50 years of buying oil, why Nigerians have not created their own 
processing refinery to purify their own oil and sell their own petroleum. The past government, African government signed documents with the British government included in the Nigerian constitution, which is those colonial laws still in place. The revolutionaries are awakening. They have a pretty good understanding about what is going wrong in their country with these foreign powers. It's not the time to talk politics. It's time to talk economics. My advice to African youth, build African industries and manufacturing companies. These multinational companies bribe your parliament to vote against African interests because Africa has the minerals, but the manufacturing is not controlled by Africa. The manufacturing is controlled by the white supremacist financial elites. They are the ones who control the policies. For example, South Africa was pressured by America to stop using coal. Coal for electricity. As a result, the whole country was experiencing load shedding, but America was buying up the coal to fuel their their coal stations. Notice the double standards. They are the ones who created the policy of green energy, yet they are not members of the Green Energy Treaty. The liberation of Africa is not limited to just having a political conversation. We also have to have an economic revolution. I encourage all of my African friends on my Facebook friends list and in my African group, Gurkai of Africa, please spread my video podcast with all of your friends on all social media sites you are on. That will help get the ball rolling. If you are serious about me coming to Africa to set up Gurkai of Africa in your then encourage people from your country who lives in America to work with me. When I come to South Africa, we will bring innovation, create manufacturing jobs for African youth. We will help solve load shedding in South Africa in exchange for citizenship. I will lead by example by applying for dual citizenship. We will also shoot our second film there entitled African Liberator, Battle Against the Colonized Mindset. Truth be told, Africa is still under the con- under colonial control. Africa don't have access to its own resources because the white supremacist financial elite wrote the policies during 1876. The settlers subjected Africa under the British mon- monarchy. The banking system is a custodian of collecting cash from Africans and moving it out of Africa legally. Those who hold the money controls the politics. Those who control the economy control the land. The policies that were imposed on Africa by the former colonizers allowed resources to leave Africa. The solution for Africa is Gurkai of Africa. I need African immigrants in America to work with me and get in our film project fully funded and made so that I can do all the things which I have written about and talked about for the past 31 years. Please don't act like black Americans and sit up here on my Facebook friends list just to be seen. In my Christian business, we will learn European economics, American economics, and Chinese economics, as well as African economics. We will learn about the barter system and promote black ec- black economic empowerment. I can't make anyone on my Facebook friends list buy my prize book, buy items from my virtual store, or donate to our film project. All I can say is there is no black leader in America that has a solution to solve our social issues in America. Please leave a public comment on my YouTube page about the topic. Most of all, share this video podcast with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. I would like to thank everyone who have contributed or will contribute to support us on our PayPal page, purchasing items from our virtual store, purchasing my revised book, 
or sending a, a direct donation through our GoFundMe page. We appreciate your support. You can find all of the links below this video podcast in the comment section. If you're listening to this audio podcast on Anchor slash Spotify, just click on the YouTube icon and select the About section. Then go down to Links. Peace and blessings. And that's going to conclude our show for today.